hopelessly devoted to you. But now there's nowhere to hide since I pushed your love aside. YouTube will shut us down. I bet we've all been humming those songs. Oh my God, what a sad. Yeah. Well, you know, it is sad. It's terribly sad, but my God, just reading some of the quotes that Olivia Newton-John, of Olivia Newton-John's. I really like the one you posted on your Instagram. Yeah. I really liked it because... I really liked it. Do you want I me to look, read it to you? Because I remember the... Sh well, read it and then I'll say, because I remember the shock at the time. I, I think in a weird way, reading the quote, and I'll just give you this little kind of lead in as a kind of build up. Reading the quote that you said she said triggered me back to a time or re allow me to reaccess a time when I discovered fully what acting meant. Because I remember seeing Greece for the first time on a coach to Spain at about the age of 12 on a school trip and a girl called Mandy tried to snog me and it was really frightening. And so the reason Greece was emblazoned on my mind was all I kept doing was pulling my head away and trying to look at the screen on the coach, which had Greece. Was she getting hold of your head? It was really quite something and, and it was quite frightening. And I remember when I then, this, I discovered this fact about her, though I didn't know the quote, that she was, as you're going to read, you know, NIC. Do you say um, people don't want to hear that you're nice, but that's what I am. I'm pretty boring. And I remember the shock of that, thinking, oh, she's, a, she's, she's not like the character in the but film. But she was nice in the no, film. No, 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 but she becomes yeah. kind she of saucy. No, but she was nice. You can be nice and saucy. Yeah, I, but I didn't know that. But I think, I think, and I'll do the about, hashtag, let's be nice, because actually... For years I used to say, God, who wants to be nice? Nice was like kind, you know, there were two weak things to say. But, you know, in a world in the way that it is at the moment, it wouldn't it be nice if people were just nicer? <laughs> yeah. We've just been in Greece and God, Everyone's the so nice. Greece was so nice. The girls were like, oh, I'm dreading going back, Mum, I'm dreading going back. Everyone's so rude in London. Everyone's, they're so nice here, they're so nice here. But also, um, I've been listening to a few of her interviews, and um, it was actually an interview with Steve Allen, strangely, because he does those interviews, doesn't he, about people's books. And he said, do you feel, and do you feel, oh, why me? Why yeah. do you feel, why, do you feel, why me ever about getting cancer? And she said, why not? Why not me? She said, I years. never think, why me? Yeah. She said, I think I live an incredible life. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for the incredible life. And and if I hadn't had breast cancer, I wouldn't have had so many of the experiences that, that I've had. Yeah. Um, lots of interesting things come about. I didn't know she was born here. And she's Australian, isn't she? But she was born here, moved to Australia. Her father, yeah. she didn't Australian know identity. for most of her life that her father worked for MI5. Isn't that crazy? Because he was restricted by the Official Secrets Act. And then Her grandfather was a famous a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Wow. Um, well, the most interesting detail you gave me, which, which sort of made me think of the whole. Um, what was the name of the? Was, what was the name of the actress who died on a boat and Robert Wagner was involved? Um, in that? Rachel. No, no, it's not Rachel. Um, no. Um, oh God, what's her name? From Natalie Wood. Natalie Woods. Natalie Woods. Yeah, it, it's sort of another boat incident where he. Her, I, well, I was staggered to. Hear I that remember her husband this. I remember this so clearly at the time. So she'd had breast cancer once. And I remember reading about her years ago. And this mm. is another thing that I liked about this. She's very holistic like I am. And, she'd, and she, had, she had this house built that was totally chemical free. She, right. she, she, she dedicated a lot of her life to, to natural healing, didn't she? Around yeah. herb, herbs and all of this. But anyway, so then she had this lovely husband. Uh, who she loved very much. She's very, very close with his ex-wife and his daughter. And he went to see, he was, he disappeared at sea. So he, he went AWOL or he was never found? Well, there was, no, he's never been found. Oh, so he could have died? Yeah, so he could have died. Oh, but right, there was right. a lot of speculation at the time that he'd done a disappearing act. Oh, right, okay. Um, heartbreaking for her. And I'm a great believer that terrible trauma, of mm, course, mm, affects mm. your health. And I remember at the time thinking, God, I hope her breast cancer doesn't return. And actually, she's been living with stage four for quite a while, hasn't well, she? Well, she, yeah, she was in her 40s. Time. Was she in her 40s when she was diagnosed? 45 when she was first diagnosed. Because people forget she was a lot older, actually, in the film. She was 25 when she did the film. I was yeah. listening to the director today, right. and he was saying that he, 
he and John had to, because she was older than John. I didn't realise that. And she yeah, said I she was going to. I, I, I thought that, they were. Yeah. I thought he was older than her. Yeah, no, he looked older that. than her. I do remember her thinking she's the older woman. So she was really nervous and she didn't want to do it. But the director and John really wanted her to do it. So they convinced her to do a screen test. And he said, the director said, and we used all kinds of lighting and everything so that she could feel really great. Mm. We spent a lot of time. Because you remember, she was quite shy. Mm. And she was shy she was and nervous. Incredibly, yeah. She? It was quite a shock that she so was he said, So he said, she kind of said yes. He goes, but then I was really, really worried that she wasn't going to be able to do the final scene right. with the sex bomb. He said, but then when she came out in the outfit, I knew that everything was okay. But he said, Nick Ferrari said to the director, what do you most remember her for? He said, well, years and years later, he said, I wrote a film that was very, very personal to me, and it was it was about AIDS. Mm. And I asked her if she would help in some yeah. way, and she insisted that she wasn't paid a penny. Right. He said she gave the most incredible performance, um, like very dramatic. She, he said, people don't know that she had this ability, yes. this great ability as a dramatic actress. actress. And she, did, she gave them a song and everything, and he said... John and I and I don't know the other who've been devastated since yesterday because we are absolutely devastated. We loved her so much. Right. He said she was everything that people think she was. She was. It was really, it's really. Sweet I mean, don't forget she she'd had a couple of number one hits before she was in Greece. She she was in Xanadu. Do you remember Xanadu? Xanadu. Xanadu. Oh, you know awesome. another interesting fact the director gave. No. He said one of the reasons that it had such a good feeling. Yes. Was. Everybody in it had been in the Broadway show. Ah, he said the only two people that had no connection to the Broadway show was him and Olivia. Right. So he said it was quite daunting for us. I didn't right. realize John had been in the Broadway show. Had he? Well, that's what he said. It was only me and Olivia no, that right. didn't have a connection with the Broadway show. It's a shame that that magic didn't transfer for uh, Evan Hansen from, from the Broadway show to the film, isn't it? <laughs> he said it was always supposed to be cartoon-like and, and surreal. I said, God, what's it listening this morning? He goes, well, you know, it began with a cartoon. Sounds like he was actually... Well, it was, actually, no, and when it was the on the other day. And then at the end, they fly off in the car. Yeah, 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 no, the other day, it was, it was very... It was almost a little bit, when I caught sight of the beginning, it's a little bit National Lampoons, almost. It, it yeah. has a real kind of caricature aspect to it. I mean, someone yesterday was going on about the fact that if you, if you took the message of Greece... From then and made the film today the message is basically you need to put on these hot pants yeah no i mean uh, we can't i mean today but she herself tackled that topic yeah. though, didn't she and she said is, it was of its time it, it was, was set in of the 50s its time. and today is not the day for that because no. if you think about everything we talk about these days we have to pick it apart and say where well, we, we should all be ashamed for a time mm. when we were just in a different time yeah. i think yes and i think that is the conversation that's been had yeah. about greece but I think today it's about for so many of us. It was it was such an important part of our. I love I, 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 I was never huge. yeah huge. I mean, and, and I've talked so often on the channel about how Greece. I've never enjoyed Greece, but you can't deny its cultural impact it. or its catchiness. Or this quote, I think, really for me sums it up. Even for those people who don't particular aren't particularly fans of the film, I don't even think it's not being a fan of the film. It's it's the it's the mass hysteria that surrounds it. I suppose. But Stockard Channing obviously played oh, Rizzo. She was so her, she says that Channing. Olivia. She says that Olivia Newton-John, and I love this, was, quote, the essence of summer. Oh. And I think was, that's true. With her little cardigan over her. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was just one of those films I love that, that just, I can't remember what was going on in the world at the time, but it just, it was a moment that yeah. became a movement because yeah. it captured people in a moment. Oh, it completely became a complete... My mum saw it four or five times. I remember as a child thinking, I've never known my mum yeah. do anything solely for herself. She kept going off by herself down to Streatham yeah. um, ABC. Did she? She'd come back, go, where have you been? What do you, I went what do you think that again. was? What do you think she was finding in it? Did it, does I think it allow it you just, to safely test drive a I different think life? the essence of summer when people were just having a great time. It was youth, it was sex, it was it was just the dancing and the singing was so uplifting, if you like that sort of thing. In a sense, if you think about it, the only modern day equivalent I can think of is Mamma Mia, the film. And it, it, that's the essence of summer too, isn't it? It's anything yeah. that taps into Freedom. the essence of summer. And, and when I was watching Greece, I had no idea of go down in the sand and all of that. We, that when we pick it apart now, it's all very... Well, you know, as they else, say, says, rapey and all of that, yeah. that new phrase. But yeah. but at the time, it was just sexy. 
I remember. It was the sexiest thing I'd ever I seen in my life. I remember being flabbergasted by her hot pants. Well, I used to. I, I, I never used to go out clubbing without that outfit. I'd I used have been to wear. I used to wear a cat suit. But when oh she walked God. up those with stairs, you know, when with she walked belt. up the stairs on the trailer or whatever it was, you know, she walked on the ride. I, I mean, I have to say, at that point, Mandy was right over there. <laughs> I had no interest as that moment was happening. And of course, they did Grease too, didn't they? Which had motorbikes and all that kind of stuff yeah. as well, which I don't think was yeah. such a success. But what I, what I love about it from a film sort of aficionado perspective, and YouTube, uh, MeTube, you kind of mentioned this, is it's one of those real filmic rarities where you're as likely to. Uh, have it on around a you know a family you know family be watching it you know who has no interest or passion or, or, or thought about filmmaking, but you'll also get it at places like the Prince Charles Cinema as a real cut. So it has a huge cult following like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but it has a real mainstream cut. And very few films straddle cult and mainstream, cult and mainstream. And I think this film is one of those films that does it. Um, I, I have to say when I saw it, I felt. If, I, if I'm not such an advocate of Greece and it hasn't, hasn't had such a sort of important impact on me, and I felt a real choke, actually, when I was posting about it on the Popcorn Junkies Instagram, I was thinking, oh, my God, this is an era. This is our era. Whatever you think of it, go Grease Lightning. It's our era. It was. It really was. Um, so, yeah, beautiful, beautiful woman, kind. And, and yet again, so you know, and also, can I just quickly ask... She has a 32-year-old daughter. But it keeps coming up that she dedicated her most of her life to plant-based medicine. Um, is there any, has there been any she talk about... She has a research centre, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, Is there any talk and that that's why she lived, you know, because she, I mean, she'd been battling cancer. I think in the end it had, uh, I think in the end I heard somewhere yesterday that it had, uh, she was struggling with, with the cancer in her spine, I think, towards the end of her life. Well, secondary, secondary breast cancer, as we know, you know, is... It's, it's they're, they're, you know, it's it's terminal, and I I don't know how yeah, long spine, yeah. she had with her. So because it's her third time, I wonder if yeah. her second time was just a repeat. Because when if it comes back to the same area, it's just a repeat, mm. not just, but it's a repeat. But when it goes to somewhere else, mm. secondary breast cancer, then that's terminal. So she knew that would have been the... But has there, has there been any assessment or discussion over the years as to whether the longevity of her, so, you know, the fact that she was diagnosed at 40 and she's lived, you know, for as long as she has, whether that was in any way attributable to plant-based medicine or not? Would, would people never want to stick their neck out and say, oh, perhaps people, she I mean, there's an alternative? plenty of people that choose to go an alternative route when it comes to cancer, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. They do tend to keep it quiet. But yeah. it's strange with her because she had a research centre, so I don't yeah. know why she wouldn't. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's yeah, it, you have to be really careful about talking about alternative things, don't mm. you? Because Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah, so maybe that's why, why we don't really know the ins and outs of what her treatment was. Lucy Heaney, Rod Stewart used the word lady to describe her and it made me rethink that word. The quiet strength of femininity. Gentlemen seen in a positive way, it's time to take back lady in the same way. Oh God, well, we're almost not allowed to say anything. Well, God, lady will God, be... You can't say lady. We'll be hung, drawn and quartered for that, lady. That's excluding, isn't it, <laughs> of, of so many different things. Um, so, yeah, so obviously John Travolta paid tribute. I posted that on the Instagram account. Um, it, very, very sweet, very And tragic. her daughter just posted some lovely photos. She yeah. didn't leave any words, but just beautiful photos. Mm -hmm. But she died with her family around her. Yeah. In her ranch. beloved home, her ranch. Um, every time she talked about her illness, she said she was a massive believer in positive thinking about her illness. Right. She had gratitude. Right. It was a big part of her staying well, yeah. she believed. Yeah. That she would say, it's here, I'm doing well, I'm okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm really, I'm going to really research what her treatment was and everything. Yeah, I'm fascinated I, 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 to know. It would be interesting. Yeah. It would be interesting. It's funny, isn't it, how big pharma have such a stranglehold on research that people are too afraid to suggest alternative medicines without being called crackpots or lunatics. Whereas, as Erin Bullimore points out, all medicine, essentially, to some degree, is plant-based. Of course other it than is. synthetically created of course it is. But even, I mean, synth even synthetic versions of medicine often use a plant-based model to be synthesised from. So, don't forget, yeah. drug companies rule the world. Uh, Lee Peart says, I just read a quote from her, we all have a finite amount of time on this planet and we have to be grateful for that. Yeah, she was a woman filled with gratitude. She was a good, good soul. Yeah. She was nice. Yeah, yeah. She was just dead nice. 
exactly that. Isn't it awful that that... Yeah, why is that a bad thing? Not that anyone is saying no, right now it is a bad thing, but it's just seen as boring. She even that? says it in her quote. Yeah. She says, yeah, and I know sorry. that's boring. She yeah. says, but I am. I'm nice. Yeah. Um, uh, it, the garden, Lee, given that you're in the room, Lee, you did a, a wondrous job of, of, of preventing the garden from, from dying, almost. Uh, uh, almost dying. Um, it's really weird, Lee. As I move around the house, I'm thinking... What did but he make it's of so this? It's weird that Lee was just like. No, I keep looking this... at things, thinking. Because I, I, I try, never... and, I try and do this thing like a movie. Where I get what I look. I look at something normal, like a sock with a hole that top is left. But there's Lee then people on the side of the thing. That... I look at it through Lee's eyes, and I shit myself. I went in the shower today, and all the bottles were beautifully lined up, and I thought, my God. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm even doing things like putting the toilet seat down for Lee. It's weird. I'm but doing more that I wouldn't so normally do. It's so because I'd love to share a, share a house yeah. with Lee at some point. But he shared our yeah. house when we weren't here. Yeah. It was so weird. But, uh, so but anyway, obviously... Uh, hey, guys, I haven't spoken uh, to you about the audience coming back. Lucy oh, yes, yes, yes. Lots of you have been messaging me. Lee's coming back as warm-up. Isn't it the best news? Oh, Lee was so pleased. Oh, my God. You've all forgotten that atmosphere that loose women used to have. It's as dead as a dodo. Crash the website again and get your tickets. Yeah, get your tickets. Crash Lee, the website. Put up your put up um, a link on your Instagram. Go to at Lee Peart. And he's going to put a link up. And then you can apply for tickets. Because it would be mm. really nice to see you guys there. Mm. Yeah, really So, nice. Mark, uh, Lee, if you're there, can you put the link up on your Instagram? At it's Lee Peart, P-E-A-R-T. Yay! Um, and on that note, Lee, you did a great job of conserving water, of distributing water, and of not leaking uh, too much. No, no leakages here, but it looks like Thames Water have had a massive, massive leak uh, in Holloway, North London. And the reason I'm talking about this very regionally specific story is that roads, we know Holloway well. I mean, we both lived there, didn't we? I mean, the Holloway Road and all around there, you, get, you don't get more urban than, than Holloway. But roads were turned into rivers as they were four foot deep rivers of water running what? through central London from guess a water. Don't fill your kids' paddling pool. But you mustn't fill your kids' paddling pool. And, and you, you must, must let, wash with a flannel now. Yeah, and you must let all of your wildlife die. Um, and well, not yet. But, a thousand, a thousand well, Olympic sized swimming pool amount of water daily. Water farms are leaking 2.4 billion is, litres every day as Brits face drought. So we've got this curious situation as there's a surplus of water in Holloway. So my advice is, if you're anywhere near Holloway, go along with a bucket and you're any any pool. large receptacle without a hole you're in it, pool. or a paddling pool, and set up shop next to it and use the water because no one can have a go at you, go at you because it's, it's come out. Uh, Lee says, the first three weeks of audience are already booked up and waiting list only. Get your applications in have soon. You put the, have you put the link on your stories, Lee? So yes, um, yeah, head over there uh, for, for the link to the, the so yeah, so, so Thames, yeah, Thames water um, leaked 600, has leaked 605 million litres of water a day based on a three year average. I mean, it's an astonishing amount, of, but, but I wanted to share in, can you share with us your water saving tactics? You always hear these urban myths that it's, it's much more uh, water can you know you can serve water better if you have a bath rather than if you have a shower if you have a shower if you rather than if you have a bath you shouldn't leave your tap running when you're cleaning your teeth uh, a very unpopular one is that you shouldn't flush the toilet as often as you would normally <coughs> I mean, everyone does one wee before they flush it <coughs> apparently a dishwasher conserves more water than you put washing up rinsing washing up rinsing how they can say that because it depends on how big well, the family and also it depends on the fact that i always wash into a bowl Whereas you often no, but you have sink. to rinse. You have, you always have, but you you quite often don't rinse. No, I always rinse. I'm a big rinser. Mark. Ever since I worked Mark, in a pub, don't lie. You when don't I worked rinse. in a pub, the the top you, tip you, I you got don't is work in a boiling pub. hot water to clean the glasses. You put everyone leaves glasses just going all kind of like fading. Are horrible. you going to start I fucking run moaning about my washing clear, up? Hot. You are awful at washing up, and you put stuff on the left. I tell you what. And you put stuff I'll on the right. I tell you what. You can, you really can do the fucking washing up now. Yeah, I love doing the washing up. Well, like I, do more I love doing then? the washing up like I love doing the supermarket do shopping. I am a partner who loves to go to the supermarket and the washing up. Hang on a minute. I will do all okay. the washing up. I'm never doing another bit of washing up. Just don't put it on the left. Anyway, so... Oh, maybe if somebody got up and dried up while I was washing babe, up, I wouldn't have to put it babe, both babe, bloody babe, sides. Babe, 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 so babe, annoying. Babe. Can somebody punch If I was me? to say to you at the point that I wash up, can you get up and dry? You'd be like, no, I'm busy Instagram. No, but also, I wouldn't say to you... I'm busy listening to... I'm busy listening to a podcast. 
or you just wouldn't listen to me because there's now the new okay, not listening okay, to I'm people. I'm not going to do this anymore because it's very boring for these people, but you will pay for it. Oh, here we go. Look, Faith Goodman, put bucket in shower with you to catch excess water. But and doesn't you know it have, it doesn't have shampoo doesn't help, in it? But I feel so cross with the water companies. Now, to be no. fair, to be fair, yeah, but we have an appalling we Victorian haven't. system yeah, that needs do. a lot of work. And to be one. fair, they have reduced their leaks by 10%. It's a massive job to fix this plumbing system. <laughs> Laurel Nichols said fork. Do you remember when that used to be our word? Fork to stop. We haven't had a word for ages. Well, oh, get, yeah. Come on, guys, right now, give us a new word, not fork. What was the other one? Divorce, wasn't it? There was another Pizza. word, fork. Biscuit? No. Tomato? No. I don't know. Come on. Why have you gone into gangster lip movements? Try the fucking Wait, hang on, I'm talking to you. Oh, Mark, I'm really annoying no, you now. Let me show you what you're doing. Lee, you know how much yeah. is annoying me now, don't you? I think even Lee gets annoyed by me sometimes. I don't think he does. Um, never had plunger. a dish. Plunger. <laughs> oh, that should be the word. Plunger. That's what we plunge do. yourself. Plunger. Yeah, with your, plunger. With your doughy eyed eyelashes plunge. from fat lashes. <laughs> fat you, lash. Fat lash lashes. If I want, when you look at me, it's like you're going, <laughs> it's like whenever you blink, it's like you go, fat lashes. It's fat a great lashes. name, because they have fat, fat lashes. lashes. Plunge, everyone's You don't need to plunge. wear any makeup when you have false eyelashes. Okay, let's just go back to this. Faith <coughs> Goodman says, take a bucket in the shower. But here's the problem with the bucket in the shower concept, is shampooing your hair, the shampoo goes in the water, what do you use that water for? What other cons what other ways do you keep to the tap running the when you clean your teeth? You can flush the toilet with to your bucket. To flush the toilet with your bucket. Use ex excess water. I for tell plants. you what, if I had small children and this heat, <laughs> I would I would be breaking that band to, to fill a bathroom pool. Say that Sorry. again. You can't have <gasps> little ones in this you heat. You can't have a say that. The <laughs> trolls will have a heyday. No, I'm not doing it, am I? But I would do it. If and and, and the other thing I'm really annoyed about is that water companies have asked neighbours to snitch on neighbours. Do you remember when Pretty Patel did this in, in the pandemic? Drones are coming, Up guys. Up until that point, there was quite a sense of community going on. People yeah. were putting together and then Pretty yeah. Patel said, can you tell on All your neighbours? tell on each other. I hate yes, that. So what they're going to do now neighbors. is there's going to be drone, low-flying drones examining your grass. Well, that's what And if they say to us at all that you've got, you've, I'm going to blame it all on Lee. Our, our, Lee, our, it's all Lee's our fault. Our grass is absolutely brown. We haven't watered it once. It's crusty. It's horrible. It's crusty. It's like a 1970s play field out there. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, water. Uh, divide and conquer and too many fall for it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian. Really awful, this actually. story uh, broke in the last couple of days. It was really interesting. When this story broke that Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian uh, are separating, um, I was staggered and amazed that A, I was telling Nadia this. I knew it. B, when I told her, she said, I don't believe it. That's all you kept saying. It was the most unexciting gossip chat, which I'm sure that if you were with Lee or anyone else, you'd be like, oh, I, no, know, no, I, still don't, I know, I still don't believe it. Because I think they they confirmed their relationship. It. I think they would have confirmed that. But now I do believe it. I did. I, I now I do actually. Before I didn't. But I. But there and is this a dark the aspect. Absolute this, standard PR thing, which is that their their um, jobs have taken them apart, which is quite right. It's nobody's bloody business why yeah. they've split up. Yeah. But I do think there's so Filming much tragedy in, in this story because now they're saying that Pete Davidson, who we know has had has had Struggles. a lot of issues and has issues with his mental health, has had to have trauma, is having trauma therapy triggered by Kanye West's, well, let's not think about the fart bush, terrifying, terrorizing, terrifying trolling of him. What terrorizing, now, really? Now, this morning, I was watching some videos of um, Kanye. Yeah. And those who know us well and have been on here for a long time know that we've been incredibly empathetic about empathetic his about yeah. his bipolar and and Kim as a partner of somebody with a mental health illness that, as she has spoken herself, said out loud, he refuses to take medication for. So that's incredibly traumatic for everybody that loves Kanye. It must be incredibly hard. Mm. And so I do sympathise and empathise with him. He's not well. But also, I mean, the things that he said about Pete Davidson a couple of days ago. We had, had a this fake mocked headline, up fake headline mm. that said, 
Pete Davidson dead at 28. I yeah, know it's so a of course he's alluding to the fact that Davidson. they had split up. Yeah. But yeah, but he did that. He, anima he did that stop frame animation, which requires a lot that, of that, effort. That, that requires that, a lot of effort. Stop oh, frame animation takes a long time. That video, I cannot believe that video severed was head. banned. Severed head, everything. Yeah. But also, he's removed a lot of his posts now. I think the only post that's up is Pete Davidson is dead. But his previous posts about in this rambling speech, yeah, 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 just, yeah. Um, you know, and underneath his posts, there's just thousands of people saying to Kanye, tell me when, tell me when, I'll get him, I'll beat him, I'll do this, I'll do that. That's petrifying. Mm. Now, there is, just rolling this back for a minute into the world of showbiz and sort of us sort of being slightly not sort of thinking about them as human beings, which I, I don't think is necessarily a good thing. Um, but you did say that they both have project, I mean, it does strike you as, is your suggestion that perhaps you'll believe it when you see it, is that this could be a narrative bump for their reality show, which is quite a neat narrative bump, isn't it? It's quite dramatic to have this in the in the shit series. But also, I'm going to a screening tomorrow of Pete Davidson's new film, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. So, you know, his name is everywhere, just, just right at the point that his horror film is coming out with A24. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not suggesting that that's a cynical thing, but it, well, it does listen, seem... Listen, here's funny. the thing. Right, show business is a business. Think about the business bit, okay? I can yeah. have this in my own tiny world of being on telly, you know, Z list TV presenter, and somebody might do something, I don't know, like an article or do, do some other show or something, and then other people might say, Oh, well, why are they doing that? This is people in our business, are they doing that for the PR? And you think, Well, no, yeah, and yes, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's like, it's like if I'm do, if I was doing a new show or I was doing a book, I'm going to do interviews for it it's because it's part of the business. Well, no, well, and I think if your business is a huge reality show, yeah, and so part of your business is parts of your life, yeah, being out there, yeah, and then somebody somewhere. Has because don't forget, this could be somebody somewhere that's made this up that's got nothing to do with Pete yeah. Davidson or Kim Kardashian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they've just not confirmed or denied it. Yeah. So I, I don't think they've gone, let's pretend that we no. split up. No. But I think if a rumor comes out from somewhere else and their PR don't, don't, don't it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, then it creates it creates it's noise right, yeah. around programs, noise. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's that's part of the that's reason. That's why that's why I thought at the beginning well, I don't think they split up. Yeah. I think it's just somebody's got a rumor and they've just gone. We're not going to answer to every bloody rumor about our relationship. That's why we create so much noise, guys. Because we just. But I do noise. think I do think trolling anybody, whether you are another celebrity, because I think if a celebrity trolls a celebrity, why should they be? Why should that be more excusable than a, if a troll trolls a celebrity? I agree. Do totally a celebrity agree. troll. Totally agree. Um, I have a headline here that says, I was really struggling to get it up, but I'm going to save that for another day because there's a big story to be discussed about Viagra. Um, and finally, 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 Donald Trump has had his Mar a Mar a la Mar how do you pronounce it? Mar a Lago? Mar a Lago, Mar -a -Lago. Florida home, uh, uh, busted by the FBI. Apparently, they are searching. He was in New York at the time. He was in New York at the time. Um, they're searching for his presidential records, apparently, because there's, there's a suggestion and accusation that he was flushing really important documents down, down the, the toilet. toilet. But he also took boxes and boxes. Yeah. Now, so, so it's but really now, 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 it's really just, just yeah, one thing before before you rush off. Um, the what's interesting about this story, and I'll tell you how I think it's going to play out. Donald Trump has publicised the fact it wasn't publicised by anyone else. Uh, Biden and the administ uh, the Democrat administration are trying to keep a long arm on this because they don't want the accusation that they're involved in this. So Donald Trump publicised the fact that his safe had been broken into and that they had invaded his uh, his, FB, his his ranch or his, his property. And he was talking about this is what happens in third world countries. He was invoking all of that stuff again. Um, if they find nothing, which they may well do, this will only serve him well. I, I always say about Donald Trump that whenever you think, ha, 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 something awful is happening here, it invariably serves him well. Well, except... Listening to this chat today from America, he has taken papers from the White House, which you are not allowed to do. Exactly. Now, he said 15 boxes were taken away. Yeah. He said, now, you might have, say there's a thousand papers in there, yeah. of which 999 are innocuous. Yeah. But there's one, one in there that's, that that's could threaten security. It's all over. Yeah. 
Well, there you go. And, but and who, so but it's, it's more was, than likely that there will be something in there. But let's not beat around the bush. If he was already flushing stuff down the toilet, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he'll. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he'll have quite rigorously <laughs> decided what to flush down the they've, toilet. Probably they've got photos of, maybe it, he's, of it being flushed no, down the toilet. Maybe he's right Maybe he's released this news because he's uber confident that he flushed all the right things down the yeah, toilet. Yeah, but you're not allowed to take any of it. <laughs> no, I know, don't that's but, the, that's but he the flushed point. them down in the White House. If it's, it's flushed, flushed in the white, they weren't flushed at Mar a Lago. No, at Mar a Lago. But they've broken into his safe. Yeah, yeah. They know something about. The no, safe. but the fact that he's publicising it, I think he feels he, he feels cock a hoop about but this. But come on, he's yeah. a complete narcissist. He always thinks he's yeah, right. No, yeah, he loves, he loves everything. Anyway, mind. guys, that was nice. That was lovely to see you all. So have a lovely day. And as I say, uh, content will be starting to trickle uh, back onto the channel over the next few days. Bye. Bye. Oh, hang on. Bye. Lots of love.